CUBN. This is Christians United Broadcasting Network. I am your host, Troy. This is the CUBN News Hour. Now, you can get in contact with us at www.cubnlive.com. Do not forget to go on our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. We're getting dominated by those negative subscribers, and we need some positives in those positive subscribers. Now, this is to all the people that comment to the videos. I love you. Keep the good comments coming. Like that. All right, let's get to the news today. What we have on the news today? An open letter to Colin Kaepernick. Now, Colin Kaepernick was one of my favorite football players. Still is my favorite football player. Not my favorite. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is my favorite from Green Bay Packers. That, by far, is my favorite. My brother's team is San Francisco 49ers. Now, he, that was one of his favorite quarterbacks right there. But we all got to step back every once in a while and understand why these people think the way they think. Come on, now. Whew. You're obviously getting a ton of responses to your decision to sit during the national anthem. Both negative and positive. But as I just read, that you intend to continue to sit during the signing of the uh, of the singing of the anthem. I felt your actions are common, deserve yet another response. In short, I admire your courage, but I question your judgment. And there is due cause for many to charge you with hypocrisy. Are you sure your actions were righteous? Explaining why you will continue to sit, you said. I'm going to continue to stand with the people that are being oppressed to me. This is something that has to change. When there's significant change and I feel like that flag represents what it's supposed to represent this country is representing people that way that it's supposed to i'll stand again i admire your courage since it is very possible that this incident will cost you millions of dollars in the coming years and you will follow Yes, and will follow you the rest of your professional career. So this is not an easy thing to do. And I think it's excellent that you feel a responsibility to use your very public platform to be a role model. That too is commendable. But that doesn't mean it is right. First, when you take an in individualistic stand like this you are putting your whole organization and most particularly your whole team in a negative light mm. isn't team first the men mentally on the on which the NFL is built aren't you taught to put the good of the team before your personal interests and points of view and as you've been struggling on the field for some time now, haven't you expected your team to have your back? Yet now you've decided that getting your personal message out is more important than cultivating team solidarity. Is that a right thing to do? As the New York Giant player Victor Cruz said, the flag is the flag. Regardless of how you feel about things that are going on in America today. And the things that are going on across the world with gun violence and things of that nature. You've got to respect the flag. And you've got to stand up with your teammates. It's bigger than just you, in my opinion. I think you go up there, you're with the team, and you go and you know you pledge your allegiance to the flag and sing the national anthem with your team and then you go about your business whatever your beliefs are you said last week to me this is a bigger than football 
and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. Perhaps it's the excellent opposite. Perhaps your act was actually selfish. Second, many of your fans find it odd that you can so easily bash the very country that enabled you to earn more money in a few years than most of us can imagine earning in several lifetimes. In fact, you're playing in a league where more than 70% of players are people of color. Yet they enjoy equal opportunity, equal stardom, and equal pay. Perhaps you could have chosen a better setting for a, for a protest than during the national anthem before an NFL game. Can you see how this can seem hypocritical? And why protests are flat? which stands for the things that make America great. As Dr. Ben Carson said, you disrespected our national anthem and flag after so many people have sacrificed so that you could have the freedoms that you have today. Amen to that. So that you could make a very, very good living in this racist land. Amen. Third, and most importantly, you need to ask yourself if you are being moved by truth or by political talking points. There's no question that there are grievous examples of white police officer mistreating black suspects. But recent studies have indicated that black officers are more likely to shoot black suspects than are white officers. While there are also examples of black officers mistreating white suspects. And there are plenty of examples of white officers mistreating white suspects. Are you sure that your stance is fair and righteous? Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark, himself an African American, recently asked, Where is Black Lives Matter? If they cared about the lives of black people, they would be marching against the liberal establishment in these large urban areas and demanding a better quality of life and a better way of life. But no, that's not what they're doing. They're, in, they're instead using the police as a straw man. Maybe you could be focusing on the larger, very real challenges faced by African Americans today. Americans. You said there are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave the getting away with murder. Leave and getting away with murder. But is this the biggest issue in the inner cities of our nation? And how many law enforcement officers are actually getting away with murder? When Dwayne Wade's cousin, the mother of four, was shot to death while pushing her stroller. Was that the fault of allegedly racist police? When there are now 90 shootings a week in Chicago, is that the fault of allegedly, uh, allegedly, allegedly racist police? When three-year-old Devon Quinn was shot and paralyzed when the car he was riding in was shot up, was that the fault of allegedly racist police? There is a reason that many black Americans are raising their voices against the Black Lives Matter movement. Some have dubbed it the Black, Li the black Lives Matter movement. And you would do well to consider what they have to say. Perhaps they could help you focus on the very real problems that they do that do exist in in America including issues of racial discrimination and injustice and perhaps you could determine to act first and speak later using your influence in a positive way behind the scenes and then saying to others follow my lead that will be both courageous and righteous now ladies and gentlemen that I could not say that better myself. I mean, you got to give that man a hands. 
That is amazing. I mean, Kaepernick is a very well-known quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, he did good, and then he started doing bad, got benched, and now he's still getting a lot of money to do what he do with his contract. I think he got like $120 million or something like that with his contract. Victor, Victor Cruz from the New York Giants. Now, that man is... Amen to, amen to Victor Cruz. You guys got to understand that right now, the narrative out is, is a racist narrative. Now... If you go outside to a black person and you're white and you ask him for something to use his cellular phone or to do something, what will happen? Will he say yes or will he say no? If a black man go up to another black man and asks him to use the cellular phone, will that man, will the black man say yes to the black man? Now, you can try that test out there and see what this world is actually coming to. But then you can go on the other route. Now, if a black man go to a white man and ask him to use the cellular phone, but dressed up in a way where he look like a gangster, then I pretty much think the white man is not going to let him use the phone. But if the black man come up dressed up like a suit and tie, or nice shorts, t-shirt, I pretty much would let the guy use my phone. Now for me, it is not racist. It's all about looking at that person and being, making your own judgment. Should I let this guy use my phone or is he some kind of psycho mass murder killer? It's how you present yourself. You don't present yourself like, give me your phone. Let me use your phone. You ain't gonna, nobody gonna let you use the phone if you ask that way. If you ask politely and you look politely and you ask, you look sensible, then you know that person will let you use the phone. So it goes both ways. You don't know if it's a um, racist type of thing or is it color versus looks versus gangster looks. It all plays a part. But to me, it is not racist. It's definitely something else. You cannot bring racists back to this country because this country is not built on racists. I mean, just look at the look at the picketers. Look at the people that fight for when this Black Lives Matter comes into play. You got people that are white in the mix fighting for it. So you got to ask yourself, is what I'm doing really um, good or can I do it another way? Is there another way to do it? And there is organizations. There is people out there. There's knowledge. You need to gain knowledge when it comes to these things. If you want to make change in your life, if you want to make real change, then you have to dig deep and stop the violence and get out there and mentally do it. Mentally get out there. Come on, people. Be a senator. Be a governor. Be a president. If that's what you want, you go do it. Take charge of you guys' lives. Stop being a, a gangster. Stop going around killing people, thinking you all that. Stop it, man. Let's love one another. Now, to this football player that Kaepernick. Right now, I just got to pray for this man because he's just all messed up in the head. You can't look at the flag as being what, what the people today are doing. You got to look at the flag of history, of what people did in the past. People died and fought and got rid of slavery and everything in this country. Made this country to what it is now, a free country. Yes, we might have our faults, but it's not as bad as the third world countries. But you look at the flag for what it stood for. You got to understand that. Those people in those graves died. Died. To keep this country safe. That's what the flag is about. The flag is about a God. One nation under God. Come on people.